Hey everybody, Scott Jansen here. We are starting a brand new interview series. Uh, so what we're going to be doing with these series, guys, we're going to take a step back from talking about business. Obviously, we spend a lot of time talking to our current students about their business. But what we're going to be doing with this uh, series essentially is we're going to learn more about the type of people that become therapists, healers, and really find out what it takes uh, to to work in this industry, you know, how these people became therapists, how they become healers, and what it's like to be in this sort of career. So it is my absolute pleasure. The very first interview that we're doing, we have a whole bunch lined up for you guys. We're going to be interviewing coaches and therapists and healers from all over the world. But uh, it's my absolute pleasure. The guest we have today is Harold. Now, Harold is an energy healer. So we're starting off with an absolute bang. If you don't know who Harold is inside of the uh energy healing world you must be living under a rock because this guy knows his stuff so it's my pleasure to have him on board today um, and actually talk to him about being a healer everything in between find out how this all started for harold and uh work out what it's like to be a healer so harold man thank you so much for joining us hey no problem thank you for having me i'm so honored and so excited to be here and share what i know yeah absolutely so look let's dive in explain to everybody what is an energy healer what's your take on it uh, so an energy healer basically utilizes um, different, what you might call universal frequencies or energetic frequencies to restore an individual by repairing uh, their their bio field, their energy, their um, bioelectric field, um, by clearing out emotional blocks that have been stored in the body and, and have gotten mm -hmm. stuck in that person's space, um, by resolving mental issues, uh, physical problems or pains. Uh, just clearing out those uh, those negative influences that are non-physical, so to speak. Okay. How did this start for you? You know, I did a bit of research and I read some stories of people saying they were born with this unique type of uh, skill or uh, attitude and they could, you know, sense people's energy and their auras. How did it start for you? Was this something you were sort of born okay. with? Um, well, I would say yes and no, because I believe that everybody is born with it, that we can all do this. This is just uh, an, a natural human ability that we've lost access to. And through uh, various forms of socialization, you know, a lot of our extrasensory abilities are, are repressed and pushed down and we, we tend to take the logical route um, through life. And uh, for me, so when I was young, looking back now, I can see that, yes, I, I, I was... I was very aware of a lot of different, um, I guess, vibrations in my environment. I could sense different things. I, I knew, um, I had a like a knowing of um, certain aspects of reality that that got pushed down through the years. But it wasn't until later on when these gifts were reawakened that I really start to use them for the benefit of myself and other people. Um, okay. But uh, but uh, how far do you want me to go back? All the way back. I'd love to okay. learn about it all. Because this is okay, this is great. new for me. There's something I don't really know much about. So definitely share your story. Okay, cool. So uh, growing up, you know, I was very sensitive to people's emotions, very sensitive to uh, different energetic currents around me. Although, again, I think that most children are, and I think this is something we all can do. But, um, you know, whether we're aware of it or not, that's another story. Um, mm -hmm. However, I was also very strong intellectually. So I, I was really uh, strong in school and and uh, you know, mastered that environment and could get grades, uh, get my marks with no with no problem whatsoever. Uh, but I, I could always kind of sense things and see things and, and know of things other than what I was being taught. Mm -hmm. And I came to soon find out that that kind of next level awareness wasn't really appreciated because school had a, a certain uh, right. framework that they, they try to push you into. And so, you know, I was rebelling early uh, if you fast forward about high school age, 14, 15 years old, um, again, I was very strong academically, but I didn't see myself as going further into college and then an office job somewhere, which is mm -hmm. where my parents saw me heading. And so being that I was naturally athletic, um, I also, um, I, I dove into sports and I was actually an amateur boxer in the US. Oh. Um, I was an amateur and pro, but at first I started as an amateur at 15 I was pretty good, and um, I was actually number two in the country in 1996, wow. and that got me into the Olympic trials because it was an Olympic year. Wow. Uh, I didn't make it to the Olympics, but I was still good enough to where I had some opportunities to turn professional. So um, straight out of that, I went into the professional ranks of, of a boxer, and 
uh, for the next several years, more than, you know, probably uh, 16, 17 years, I actually traveled around the world. I, I fought on, on television and, and, you know, did all these amazing things. Um, but halfway through my boxing career, it started out, I was very successful. Uh, a few years later, though, I started to fall apart emotionally and I didn't understand why. So mm -hmm. um, it seemed like I had no identity. I didn't know who I was. I was I was depressed. I, I was feeling anxious. And, and um, you know, all these, I guess, these things that I hadn't dealt with early in life that it come, had come back to haunt me and were crashing mm -hmm. down on my, you know, my entire life was falling apart. Sure. Um, within a few years of that happening, I found myself going from being successful, being uh, you know, this upcoming athletic star to being, uh, I was on substances, I was using drugs, I was in and out of jail and, and I just stopped and I had this real uh, epiphany and I said, whoa, like, what's going on here? Where did, how did I get from there to here? Mm -hmm. um, it didn't make any sense at all. And it was actually, I was in a jail cell actually for the last time Wow. when I, I stopped and I had, you know, this awakening and and I started to take my life apart going backwards and seeing where did all this start and how did things go wrong? And I realized I had been pushing down a lot of things since I was very young. And I uh, started reading books and I dove into uh, traditional self-development and I read, you know, all the Tony Robbins. I, I read so many books that I, I can't even count. <laughs> um, and I was absorbing, I was taking notes. And I found that literally over the course of just days and weeks, my my whole uh, outlook on life was was turning around. It was transforming. Um, depression went away. Uh, wow. The drug abuse went away. Uh, the anxiety went away, and I started to rebuild myself. And when I came out of that period, uh, you know, I was just a brand new person. It was amazing to me how someone could actually just work on themselves and, in a very short amount of time, just clear up their whole life. So. I really got into that and um, I couldn't stop learning. I kept absorbing book after book after book, um, training courses. Uh, however, when I would, I, I'm always hungry for more information and knowledge. And when I would reach what I felt was the pinnacle of where I could go with uh, traditional self-development, people would always talk about hypnosis in the subconscious mind, right? Mm -hmm. So that's actually how I, I, I found you because I, I did hypnosis for over 10 years. Uh, from traditional self-development, I started looking into hypnosis. And at first I was thinking, no, nah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go there. This, this is like that hocus pocus stuff, mind control. <laughs> like this is, this is some yeah. crazy fair, airy fairy stuff. Like I'm not, yeah. but you know, as I was learning more and more from the best teachers out there, they kept talking about it. So I said, you know, I, I don't really understand it, so I can't outright reject it. So let me at least uh, read up on it and, you know, see, understand this craft of hypnosis. So I started mm -hmm. to study and, and realize, I was like, wow, this is even more real than what I was doing before. This is, you know, diving into the subconscious and all these mental programs and different things like that. And, and uh, it was just blowing my mind. And so I learned hypnosis. Uh, I was studying that just around the clock. Uh, I I was trained. I was originally certified by uh, Igor, and uh, mm -hmm. I think I think his first American seminar or one of the first mm -hmm. uh, live. So, and I was I was certified over and over again. And at that point in my life, boxing had really taken a back seat because okay. as I cleared myself up inside, I realized that I I was only in that field for the ego driven goals. And I never really enjoyed it that much. And I really didn't have that drive for that level of competition and, and fighting it out with people. I, you know, that, that just wasn't in me anymore. So now instead of hurting people, I wanted to help heal uh, mm -hmm. myself and, and then others. So um, I was certified over and over again. I was always a talented individual. So I had um, a skill of writing from mm -hmm. a very young age. And uh, I came out and I became a freelance writer for people in the self-development and spiritual development uh, industries. And I chose mm -hmm. that because I figured I could learn while I earn and basically get taught by these, these great masters of their field. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I actually signed on with a company out of Australia, as a matter of fact, that produces um, hypnosis and NLP programs, online okay. programs. I became mm -hmm. their chief writer and I would write for them 
Uh, I've written probably 50, 60 courses in NLP wow. hypnosis, everything from Ericksonian to conversational to sales to anything you can imagine. Mm -hmm. um, and I would study, just study, 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 which is actually how I found you because I mm -hmm. took some of your uh, Udemy courses uh, some years mm -hmm. back. And the my employers, my clients would actually pay for me to take any courses that I wanted just so that okay. I would have the, the knowledge and, and keep up on my skill set to be able to write for them. And so a few times a year, they would send me these big boxes full of uh, DVD courses and audio courses and manuals. Yep. And I would just study those things nonstop. Uh, fast forward a, a little bit later and you know, being someone who's always open to that next level, who's always, you know, just continuously evolving. Uh, I said, okay, what's next? Cause I, I just felt like there was something else for me. Mm -hmm. And I saw this guy on YouTube and this was when I went into the intuitive uh, coaching phase. Mm -hmm. And I saw this guy doing this amazing things where he would, he would talk to people and he didn't have to really go through his his memory banks and look for the right technique and he wouldn't he wouldn't go through these different uh these different skills that he had he would just basically connect with them on a an energetic level mm -hmm. and from that he would receive information uh and and it was all it was spot on and this i, I was watching this guy and it couldn't have been I, I it just couldn't have been staged i was i was taking the part backwards and forwards and Real and it, it was just such so so many powerful things that he was saying that was coming forward from him. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like, how is he doing this? And people's problems would dissolve. He would bring people on stage, and they would have these illnesses, and he would talk about the stuck emotions that were kind of causing these symptoms in the body, and mm -hmm. um, and he would bring in information that they needed to know, and and things about their past and and the childhood and things they didn't tell anyone, and they were you know releasing and, and crying and. These, uh, these beliefs were being dissolved right in mm -hmm. real time. And mm -hmm. he would bring them back a few weeks later or a couple months later and the disease would be gone, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was amazed, I was blown away. Again, though, it, you know, I had this idea that that's this, this hocus pocus stuff. I'm not gonna <laughs> deal with that. You know, it's, yeah, this is crazy. You know, he must be, and, but I, I knew again, I was like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to judge because I don't understand it. So let me at least, kind of dive into it. I read one of the guy's books. It just blew me away. Uh, such powerful insights. And I had a session. I had three or four free sessions actually with some people that he had trained. And this woman was, man, she was just tearing things out of my soul from my childhood and things that I'd, I had even forgotten about and it hidden and didn't even know were there. And she was pulling them out and, and bringing up like places and things that happened. And, um, and telling me, like helping me reframe these beliefs that she brought out of me that I'd never even told anyone about. And it just, it blew my mind because after those sessions, not only did I feel so much clearer, but my life just changed automatically. So the weeks that mm -hmm. followed, um, I would, I would be talking different. I would, I would feel stronger. I would be more confident. I would be, you know, uh, bringing opportunities into my life and all, everything was changing my relationship. And so I said, wow, I got to do this. I got to learn this. So I, I studied with them for a couple of years in intuitive development. Um, and I learned how to actually do that, how to connect with people on the energetic level. And I did that for, I actually had over 2000 clients uh, for intuitive coaching sessions. Mm -hmm. But I, I got, I, I felt like that wasn't, wasn't really where I was meant to stop because there were a lot of people who would come seeking those services who weren't really uh, willing to do the work. Mm -hmm. um, they wanted this magical fix um, while I was telling them, look, I'm bringing up this information, but this is for you to take it and do something with it and to change your life. And, and um, you know, it, I, I was, I kept coming uh, face to face with the fact that I wasn't thriving in, uh, emotionally. I wasn't enjoying dealing yeah. with those clients. So um, and I and I always knew there was something else for me as well. It, that intuitive nudge kept telling me there's there's another level for you. Um, and what was brought into my my sphere was energy healing, something I had never thought of. I had never even known what it would would have what it was about. But I kept being drawn uh, over and over again to this practice. And I and this guy, I found this guy halfway across the world, very not very well known in in Western circles, but. 
um, I would read his website and it just, it was just hitting me internally. It resonated with me. And so I, I said, you know, I'm going to learn from this guy. Um, I booked some sessions and I went through an attunement process with him. He's halfway, he's halfway across the world. Mm -hmm. uh, I had no idea what it would be like. And actually I, I, I was very doubtful. I would say on some level, I, I wouldn't admit that back then, but I, cause I was open to, to see what happened. But in my mind, I'm saying, well, what is this guy going to do? You know, right. is he going, we're going to go through this meditation and then I'm supposed to be able to do energy healing. And, uh, I thought that afterward I would just be imagining it or I'm going to try to wave my hands over people and nothing is going to happen. Uh, so, you know, I was, I was skeptical in a way. Um, so we started the session and immediately this guy, man, I, I felt these powerful currents of energy through my body. I felt like I was going to explode out my skin. And I, I, <laughs> I couldn't, I was like, how is he doing that? And he took me through this process and uh, we finished that session and immediately afterward, I did the little technique to activate the energy and boom, the, those currents of energy came right back. And I, I, I could never have anticipated um, having no reference points for what that was like. I, I, I would never have described it, what it was like. I thought maybe it was in my mind's eye or something like that, but to realize that it's, it's literally like physical, like physical, like I feel these physical currents, like vibrations and, and waves and, and colors that I see with my physical eyes. And, and I couldn't ever imagine that. Um, and now, so I, I see clients and they, they explain the same thing. People come to me who've never done this before and they jump out of the chair, you know, they're, they're feeling great, but they say, Whoa, what the hell was that? You know, I, <laughs> I felt yeah. these vibrations like washing from head to toe. And I felt these pulsations and seeing purple lights and all this, this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I, I couldn't prepare for that. I didn't know it was an actual physical thing. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, I'm, you know, I, I, I went way into left field. So, um, did you have <laughs> Yeah, actually, what I, what I was curious about, so I'll, I'll rewind just a little bit and we'll sort of pick up where you left off. So when you were young and you were sensing this thing, you had no way to describe it. You sort of knew that something was different. Yeah. What was that experience like? How did you know that what you were experiencing was a little bit different than everybody else? Right. Well, uh, for one, you know, when you're a kid, you just think that everyone can can do and see things the same way that you do. So I, I didn't yeah. know there was anything different. But I remember talking to a friend of mine in school one time, and um, he was he was saying that he had trouble sleeping the night before. And I said, "Yeah, I know what you mean. Like when you're, uh, if somebody in the house has has uh, maybe they they leave, they sleep in the other side of the house, but they left a, a television on or something, and mm -hmm. even though you can't hear it." You just you just know that it's on. You can sense that something electric is on, and you go. You have to go turn it off, or you can't sleep. And mm -hmm. he didn't know what I was talking about. And I said, "Well, mm -hmm. I, can't everybody do this?" Because I would sense, you know, uh, electronic gadgets in my house that people could leave on, mm -hmm. and I would go turn them off because of the 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 sensation would just bug me. Yeah. Um, and also emotions, uh, like I could feel people's emotions very powerfully. Mm -hmm. And when I was like a teenager and a young adult, you know, I, my, I had mostly just girls on my mind. And so I remember I would go to a party, but I'd be too shy to talk. Mm -hmm. But I would just hold this, I guess, this, uh, this, this energetic presence in, my, in me mm -hmm. of meeting this girl. Uh, I'd pick one out of the crowd that was like the one I wanted to talk to. And I would just hold this space of the, just this connection. I can't even describe it. And without fail, um, eventually in a few minutes or so, that that very you know woman or girl would would look around and she would she would find me, and then she would just start smiling and she'd walk over and start talking to me. Mm -hmm. And it was I was so afraid to go talk to her that I would just I would do this thing energetically that I didn't know how I did it. Mm -hmm. um, but it worked every time. And when, when friends of mine would go out to the clubs with me, they would say, how do you, how do you do that? Like this, is, <laughs> like this guy, yeah. we're, we're over here talking to all the ladies and we're getting, we're getting shot down like crazy. This guy just sits down and, and the girl comes, talks to him. So mm -hmm. I, I would do these different things and I would, I would manifest things. Um, you know, I would, I would just know that things were going to happen and I would take this leap, um, 
without having any proof or any resources and exactly what I, what I knew was going to happen would happen. So mm -hmm. I had this inner knowing and I had the, this ability to kind of sense uh, mm -hmm. what was going on around me, I guess on a level that a lot of people weren't aware of. But again, I, I believe that all of us have these senses. Mm -hmm. um, some of us are just a little bit more tuned into them at, in the beginning, you know, yeah. earlier in life. So when, you, when you're experiencing all these different things happening, what were you thinking? Um, I wasn't really thinking anything, you know, as, um, as a so kid, you know, just, or anything like that. no, you, you just, it just feels natural. It just felt like something that was natural. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, to me, I didn't, didn't see anything, um, out of the ordinary with it. Although yeah. I did learn, you know, through the, my studies later on in energy work and intuitive counseling, things like that, um, the, the effect that, 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 the, that other people's energy has on us. And that mm -hmm. made a lot of sense uh, going back through my life. So many situations that I can remember where that was going on, but I had no no way to understand it. Um, mm -hmm. Were you trying to you know, talk to people about it? You know, when you were growing up, what were their, what was their response when you started to describe it? Um, well, my friends, <laughs> when I talked about being able to sense, uh, you know, electronics in different parts of the house, uh, he, he laughed at me. He made fun of me, you know, and got a bunch of guys to laugh at me. And, you know, it kind of hurt me because I was like my best friend. I was like, why is this guy picking on me? You know, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, yeah, the, I didn't really, besides that, I didn't really come into too much resistance because I never brought it up because this right. is something I just assumed everybody else was doing. Right. Right. So when yeah. you were, when you were in prison, um, and the whole personal development thing started, was that a way for you to try and deal with what was going on in life? Or did you have a calling for that personal development type stuff as well? Yeah, it was a way to deal with the, my circumstances because okay. I I was just hit with this this huge uh, stop sign. You know, I, mm. I was in jail. I have nothing but time. Mm. <laughs> and while I'm there, I said, you know, I'm not, I'm never coming back here again. I'm never coming back here again. And so I started to pay attention and to people around me. And I realized that we were all using the same language. We were all, mm -hmm. we all had thought in the same ways and talked in the same ways. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, if, if we're all kind of mirroring each other, but yet we end up in this place over and over again, then whatever we believe or whatever we think about it is wrong. You know, that was just, it was so obvious to me. If I'm if I believe this way and I'm not getting the results I want, then what I believe is wrong. And mm -hmm. so I said, well, how do I believe something different than what I believe? Where do I find mm -hmm. alternate ways of thinking that would help me not come back here again? Because I I I was like, well, there are people, there are mil millions of people who never end up in these circumstances their entire lives, who never go to yeah. jail or do anything. I said, well, how did I get here? Because I used to be one of those people who would have never, I would have never thought myself to be a job, would have never thought myself to use drugs. But there I was just three years uh, from when the time I was, I was so successful. I was an up, this up and coming athlete. Yeah. Well, and what, do you so, think, what do you think happened? Yeah. So I realized that all the stuff I've been pushing down since I was young, just started coming to the surface. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. When I, when I was, <clears throat> So growing up and being one of those kids who was just a weird kid who always thought things differently than other people, saw things differently than other people, could explain things and talk about things differently than other people, um, you know, that's not really uh, honored, you know, and typically in society. So, you know, I was, I always felt like the outcast. I was always the weirdo. And that's why eventually I started using athletics in order to get me out of that because people loved athletes, you know, and, yeah. and athletes were popular and athletes got girls. So I've been pushing down all of these, um, these feelings of rejection and of not being wanted, not being good enough and, and not getting it right. And all these things from my youth, I found uh, athletics as a way to distract myself from dealing with those things and to push those away. Because when I was competing, um, you know, everybody, people loved me, you know, and I had this, this family of uh, people that I trained with and worked out with. So I didn't deal with any of the personal stuff. And as mm -hmm. you know, you know, you don't, it doesn't go away. It just, it just kind of festers beneath the surface. So all this yeah. stuff had been growing and I was gaining popularity as a professional bo boxer. And after about three, four years into that, 
it, it was like it just couldn't get pushed down any further. So everything started coming up to the surface, which is why I immediately, I started feeling all of this anxiety and uh, depression. And um, I, I lost, <clears throat> I lost my sense of who I was. And I went, I had physical symptoms as well. Like I stopped being able to, I stopped being able to see my reflection in a mirror. And I wow. thought that was, I didn't really freak out, but I thought that was kind of strange. It wasn't like I was a vampire or anything like that, but uh, I would look in the mirror and when I looked at my face, it was just blurry. It was just like this wow. figure. And I could I could still comb, you know, brush my hair and get dressed because, you know, it, I could see clearly when I looked at there, certain parts. But uh, when I looked at my face, I just, I, it would just be a blur. Mm -hmm. And um, I dealt with that for like several months. And, um, and I didn't realize, I, I learned through my reading later on that that was uh, subconsciously, that was a symbol of me feeling like I wasn't there. Like I had, mm. I had, I had no sense of self. I didn't know who I was. And that was true because I built up this character to, to get through life. Mm -hmm. And I had just neglected who I was. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that, that was important yeah. for all that stuff to come up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. To where you are now, yeah, because I say that um, the time that those three years of my life were the the hardest I ever went through, but it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Best thing, mm. because I found my 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 calling, my path, which is this, which is to help people, and uh, I love the energy work. I'm so passionate about it. But had I been successful in what I thought I wanted early on, um, that life, you know, wouldn't wouldn't nearly be as fulfilling. And uh, I, I have a lot of friends who I came up with who who went on to achieve great success in boxing, and and a lot of them ended up broke and and you know sure. broken up, and um, it just wasn't a good a good life in the end. So yeah. I'm glad so that would, I got would, yeah yeah. Would you say this energy work chose you, or do you think you chose it? I think that uh, it chose me, but it was mm. it was always there. The path was always there. Mm. Um, I believe though that that it chose me. Uh, it just took me a lot of going through different things yeah. in order to really discover that. Yeah, and to really appreciate it for what it was. Yeah. So looking at when we'll get more into, I'm definitely really interested to work out what you're doing with your clients. But knowing what you know now, how would you describe what you went through back then when you were first learning about this thing that was inside of you? What I was learning about the energy work. Yeah, how would you describe it now? Looking back, knowing what you okay. know about it now, how would you describe it back then? Well, it, it you know it started again with the the traditional self development, and mm -hmm. when I I realized how much my life could transform just by working on myself a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, that just blew my mind, and I, I couldn't the joy that I felt in being able to actually clear things out of my life that were weren't serving me, and to become someone new and improved. Um, that just blew me away. So I, I immediately almost wanted to share that with other people. I said, wow, so many people could benefit from this process of self-development mm -hmm. that I, I want to spread this. I want more people to feel like I feel. So mm -hmm. I started as a just a typical coach and I would coach people here and there, but I never had any financial success with it. I had my freelance writing business, so that wasn't a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, and then getting into hypnotherapy, you know, I would see clients here and there, same thing. I wanted to, I really enjoy, um, I really enjoy being the catalyst for someone else to transform their life. Not, not even from an egoic standpoint, but just to see some, just to, just to see someone experience their own transformation in whatever way that unfolds for them. I really yeah. get a kick out of that. And if I had if I had millions of dollars, didn't have to work yet a day in my life, I'd still wake up every morning and I would coach people for free. I would heal people for free, those who mm -hmm. need it most and who can't pay, uh, because I just love doing it so much. So yeah. just, um, I guess, being a part of, being able to observe that 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 transformation in other people, it really yeah. brings me joy. Yeah. Uh, so look, let, but, let, let's yeah. let's look at your clients. What do they come to see you for? Um, well, the thing is with my clients, it's difficult because I know that it's important to choose a niche or niche, but uh, 
been difficult. That, that's been the, the most difficult part, I think, for me, because people come to me for all sorts of different issues. Uh, everything from um, dealing with PTSD to pains, uh, headaches, um, you know, stress, anxiety. Uh, so, I, so far, I've seen clients on the vari- on, on a variety of issues. Mm-hmm. Um, haven't really nailed down that one person that I'm speaking to yet. Yeah. Well, what's been the biggest surprise for you working with people, knowing that you grew up with this and had to overcome your own issues and your own version of suppressing this? What surprised you most about realizing, wow, there's a lot of people that are suffering the way that I was? I guess what surprises me most um, is something that I overlooked as well for so many years to realize that a lot of times the most profound changes are very simple. Very, there's only a couple of little, um, a couple of little pins to pull out in order to make the whole problem just crumble. Um, so, yeah, how simple how simple change can be because uh, personal development, spiritual development is my life. Ever since you know. 15, 16 years ago when I started getting into it, mm-hmm. um, I just, I, I can never get enough. I'm not, I'm not obsessed to the point of like an attachment, like an addiction, but I just enjoy it so much. I enjoy evolving so much mm-hmm. uh, that I wake up every day. You know, when other people are watching television, I'm meditating, I'm reading, I'm doing these. <clears throat> and I've been doing that every day for, you know, decades. So um, this is like my thing. And so therefore it, some things to me seem so simple, mm-hmm. uh, but knowing that for the person who's going through the problem, it can, it can appear to be insurmountable, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so and I think that's, what's the biggest surprise for me is realizing that yeah. some of the most important changes are very, very simple. Yeah. Has working with clients affected you? in your own personal life as well and what you know as being an energy healer? Um, yeah, I learn a lot about people and I learn compassion for people and I learn to mm-hmm. see people from uh, being where they're at and that they can only be where they're at at this moment and to help them make that next step into the next level for them and to not, uh, I used to, because as a coach, I used to be kind of hard ass, I guess. And I, and I still am to to a degree because I think the the nicest thing I can do for people is just be brutally honest sometimes, you know, just not give them because they've been going through this problem for a long time and they have yeah. been lying to themselves and other people are reinforcing it and lying to them. That's they don't need that. That's like the meanest thing I could do to them. So the nicest mm-hmm. thing for me sometimes is just to tell them straight out when I when I used to have the intuitive clients. Uh, most of them would come to me for relationships and I would just have to tell people, you know, have you thought about the fact that you just picked the wrong person? You mm-hmm. picked the wrong person and I don't want to be the one who to tell you this, but it's most likely never going to work because you picked that person from a very wounded place where you weren't healed yourself. Mm-hmm. And what you're going through, you drew in that same personality who also had all these wounds and both of you are, you know, it's just not going to, you're, you're not coming from a place where you can make this work and you probably got together for the wrong reasons anyway. So mm-hmm. it, sometimes telling people that is not what they want to hear. And um, it's hard for them. Mm-hmm. But I know that if I was to, um, you know, just let them go on without realizing that I'd be mm-hmm. doing them a great s- disservice. So yeah. uh, I forgot what you asked me, actually. No, but- no you're, on, you're on track. Uh, what, I, what I'm curious about, like when your clients have the results and they're healed. What's that like for you? Oh, it's amazing. It just, it just sends me through the roof. I love it. <clears throat> and I always, you know, being someone who's very much into spiritual development, I always, I'm very careful not to allow my ego to take over because that, mm-hmm. that sort of um, egoic, uh, you know, uh, consciousness is always there looking to claim, you know, claim ownership of the result. Yeah. And, you know, I always, um, I, I keep myself back farther and far enough to know that this is their change and their transformation. And it was what was coming through them. But also mm-hmm. I feel just tremendous success and joy, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, especially when people uh, are able to let go of maybe pain that they've dealt with for years. And that happens very often. And people are yeah. sometimes so freaked out by it. They don't, they don't know how to, uh, 
They don't even know how to take it. And I, and I can understand. Um, for instance, I had a lady who uh, she comes into my office because uh, I had a practice here in town. I no longer do. I, I do everything online. But mm -hmm. she came and saw me for um, she wanted to to, re to release some of these symptoms of PTSD she had. Of course, I'm not a doctor and I can't, you know, sure. technically treat that. But she this is the problem that she she had. So um, <clears throat> she comes in and she's in tears. She's like she, her head's down. Her eyes are low. She's basically crying. She's trying to tell me about her issue. She's she, her shoulders are drawn in and she has all the expression of someone who's just been beaten down by life. And uh, so we sit in the chair. She sits in the chair. Um, I, I, I run the energy for, you know, I do the, I, I, I do my techniques and she, I mean, when I finished, I had to catch her because she was so, she was so in the zone. She almost flipped out, out of the chair. And so I caught her and she looks up with this huge smile on her face, big eyes. And she's, she says, Whoa, she jumps up. She's like, what the hell was that? And, um, I was like, how do you feel now? She, and, you know, she was feeling fantastic and her energy was entirely different. She was bouncing. She was like, mm -hmm. oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm coming back. I'm coming back to you. Um, so she's walking out of the office and she's getting her keys out. She's so excited. She drops her keys on the floor. Uh, she bends down to pick them up and then she just pauses. And I'm like, what's going on? And she says, oh, my God, I can, I can bend down. And I said, what? She said, yeah, I've, I've had this like frozen hip uh, for wow. about eight years. I haven't been able to bend down past my my midpoint um for almost a decade but i just dropped my keys and i i can squat all the way down this is what did you do i said i didn't even know we were working on that but you know the energy is very intelligent so it goes where it needs to go so mm -hmm. a lot of times people will have things disappear that they were they were afraid to ask me for because they thought it was so big yeah um, skin conditions um bone problems uh a lady a lady had migraine headaches every day for a year and a half one mm -hmm. session they were gone. Wow. Uh, yeah. And, and so people are blown away. And that I really enjoy when people have those major, big, noticeable changes, like right away. Yeah. yeah. Now, I know what it was like for myself as a hypnotherapist and being a guy and talking about feelings and healing as well. Did you have any issues with that? Um, with, with other people? Yeah, talk like, you know, traditionally go get a nine to five job. Men aren't supposed to heal people, talk oh, about yeah. feelings in that perspective. Did you have issues yeah. like that with yourself? Yeah, I, yeah, because, um, and, and generally it's the people around me. And, yeah, you know, I love them all, my friends and family, but they come from this traditional background where um, they see life as following a certain track uh, yeah. for men or for women. And so even though it's not spoken uh, verbally, they drop hints all the time. They drop right. hints as to why aren't you, you know, go, you could work. Oh, you know, they're paying this much at the factory down there, or they're paying, um, <laughs> or sometimes I wear, you know, I, I, I wear crystals and the spiritual jewelry and, uh, you know, I get these funny looks and it, you know, because I'm, I'm like this big guy too. I've, uh, you know, I was a, I was a pro boxer and I was this big guy and I wear this, these crystals and things like that. And so people look at me strange and, mm -hmm. and they, they make comments that I have to read between the lines, but I know what they're getting at. And they, they, yeah. you know, are trying to fit me into that box of this traditional guy who goes and works yeah. in the wood shop and, and, uh, you know, works this, this uh let this manual labor for you know 10 hours a day and comes home eats a steak yeah. and works in the wood shop yeah. and i'm not that guy you know and i and yeah. i let people know i i have at this point and all the work that i've done i felt that way when i was younger when i was a kid and that's you know what caused me to go through all those problems coming out of that you know i'm i'm more than happy to just claim who i am because i love who i am and this is um this is really my authentic being yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very self-validated in that aspect now yeah. as young, as a young boy, not so much. Yeah. How, how do you avoid being pulled into that <laughs> nine to five world and that stereotypical go get a job, get married and, you know, settle down? How do you avoid all that? Um, I just, Stay true for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just, I, I, I'm so into doing my own thing and knowing that this path is right for me that I just, I, I start the day and I get busy doing my own thing and everyone just kind of 
they eventually it's like my um my understanding of self is so strong now that others kind of conform to that and as mm -hmm. as opposed to me trying to adjust to whatever they're they're doing or they're thinking or um the pull by society everyone knows that uh to not to don't not even expect me to to fall in line with what they think <laughs> you know, what yeah. they think I should do and to not bring it up either, because I'm so, uh, if, if, you know, <laughs> people question me on this kind of stuff and I, my understanding is just, uh, it, it's, it's out of, it's out of this world. Like I, I, I love having conversations with people when they challenge me on different things because, and, and I don't care about really fighting or being in conflict, but I just like talking about this stuff. So, you know, people, um, they challenged me with their ideas about what, you know, what should be and how, how men should be and, and family should be and things like that. And um, I quickly, I'm quick to put them in their place, you know, on that. Yeah. So with your skills, the current way they are, is there a way to increase the power of energy healing and improve your own skills? How, how do you go about that? Yeah, there is. And uh, it's a practice that I get, I gauge in every day and okay. in different ways. One of the ways to increase your skill is to increase your spiritual energy. Um, so what what some people call chi or prana, um, it's like the spiritual life force in your body. And mm -hmm. and through um and it, it already it's already flowing because you're alive, it's already flowing through your system. But if you throughout life we always we pick up these these beliefs and this these emotional um I guess this emotional baggage. And the more that stuff that stays stuck in you, the 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 more restricted that flow is. So mm -hmm. the more self work you do by removing your dysfunctional beliefs and clearing things out and uh, releasing those pent up emotions, the stronger your flow becomes. Mm -hmm. I also take certain minerals. Certain um, there are certain minerals that are spiritually um, activated and that will actually increase the flow of energy in your body, mm -hmm. um, which I do daily. Exercise, of course, is important. Um, and also different technologies that I use, like sound. There's, you know, mm -hmm. in, uh, basically inaudible sound waves that, mm -hmm. you can, um, that you can use that actually will boost and will strengthen your energy channels. So I do a lot of things on a daily. Like I said, this spiritual and personal development is like my life. So I start yeah. early and... Um, it's um, just yeah. kind of going. Yeah, and the more you practice, the more you practice, the more, the stronger your abilities get. The more you heal other people, the stronger your abilities get. Um, yeah. Because, and I know this because I'm also a trainer now. So I became, I, I kept graduating to become a master healer and trainer, and I tune other people mm -hmm. to use this craft. So, yeah. Yeah. So are, are, there, are there different types of energy healers or energy healing? <laughs> are there different labels and different types, or is it all essentially just the same thing? There are different different types. I would say it all comes from the the one source, the infinite source that, that creates all there is. But uh, in this universe, and even in this physical, you know, planet, there are infinite frequencies just mm -hmm. passing through us and all around us all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the human being is. Um, is able to attune to a very wide spectrum of those frequencies. So there are different levels, so to speak, of energy that you can use. You can access access energy for anything at all. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and that's one of the things that I teach as well, be, because it's not just about healing, which is a very powerful uses of energy, but mm -hmm. also to go from shy to confident, to go from uh, to to improve your family to just shift who you are completely um mm -hmm. you know all of that's possible just by tuning yourself into different i guess frequencies of being states of being mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so but to answer your question there are different levels okay. of of potency i guess as far as healing and mm -hmm. i i believe and a lot of people believe this but i believe that i'm dealing with one probably the most powerful if not one of the most powerful uh, methods. Um, this is something again that I was led toward, and that's what I was looking for. I opened myself to the the most cutting edge, the most powerful um, that humanity is able to access right now. And I was I found this guy from across the world who, no, you know, no one over here has ever heard about. Um, mm -hmm. 
and always led through intuition. And uh, it, it, it turned out to be exactly what I thought it was. I mean, there's, it's, it's just so, um, so powerful and life changing. I can't even describe it. Yeah. Had you not followed this calling, what do you reckon you would have done with your life? Oh my goodness. Um, you know, surprisingly, I'm very good at making money. So if I didn't feel this calling, I probably not. I'm very good at making money. The biggest thing that I've struggled with that though is, you know, sometimes my own healing practice, because I don't know if it's because it's so important to me. I don't want to, sorry, I don't want to mess up. I don't want to make mistakes. I don't, sure. you know, too self-conscious about making the right moves, but I am the king of offline hustles. And so I have, <laughs> I've created, you know, money through different businesses in the past. I'd probably just find the, the I'd probably look for the business that I could make the most amount of money and the mm -hmm. shortest amount of time with the least amount of effort. And I just do that, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, I've do done a lot of things. Happy? Happy. What'd you say? Do you reckon you'd be happy doing that or? No, no, <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, I've, I've, um, I've created businesses um, that were making great money, but I abandoned them because th it wasn't what I, I, I just felt like I couldn't get up and be happy and do that every day. Um, right. So, and this is what I want to do. Um, you know, I've flipped houses. I've, uh, um, I've, I've, I've bought and sold merchandise and done things that, that made a lot of money in a short amount of time. But, mm -hmm. you know, I would step away from that business after achieving some, achieving some success just because, um, I could, my heart wasn't in it. Yeah. What's for you, what's so important about this and doing what you're doing? Um, just because I, I hate to see people suffering unnecessarily. Mm. Yeah. And being someone who's always kind of been in tune to other people's emotions, I'm, I've always been very empathetic. And when I see suffering in the world or in the community, man, it, it, it really hits me in my heart. Mm -hmm. And so, to relieve as much of that as possible is the biggest benefit for me. Mm -hmm. um, again, if I could do this for free and if I could just travel around and teach people how to heal and do healings for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. I would I would probably do that and be overjoyed. I'd wake up without an alarm clock because um, I would really love to see the planet uh, evolve and for a lot of things to go away that mm -hmm. um, you know humanity is suffering through. Yeah. So that, that is the biggest uh, motivation for me, I guess. Yeah. So for people that are watching this, that really don't understand much about this other than what you've taught us today, explain to them what's it like to wake up as a healer and to live a life as a healer and to help clients through healing. What's that like? Um, I say it's, it's extraordinary because as you heal others, you heal yourself as well. Yeah. So their life improves and your life keeps improving. Um, it's where you get to wake up and and know without a shadow of a doubt that you are actually making a positive difference in this world. That the day that the world is better today because you were here and you did what you're doing. Yeah. And for a lot of people, you know, that's what we're searching for. We're searching for that feeling of, um, for one, we're searching for freedom. We're searching mm -hmm. for that feeling of of knowing that we we count, we matter, that we're doing something that's important, that we're helping people. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of industries where you can make a lot of money um, that aren't really providing value yeah. to the human race as far as nurturing life. And, you know, and there are very, there are many industries that are very counter to, uh, to human development. Yeah. Um, but if you want something where you can go to sleep at night and you can wake up feeling great about yourself and with a peaceful mind and heart, Mm -hmm. and be able to experience over and over again the joy of mm -hmm. witnessing um, people let go of some of their biggest burdens in life. Yeah, That's the kind of joy that I feel every day. Yeah, And I just want more of it. I just want to feel, feel that more often by working with more wonderful people. Yeah. What, what do you think has been the hardest thing throughout this entire journey for you? Um, the hardest thing for me would be I guess finding finding this path and deciding to actually take the leap and, and get on it. Um, because again, we're programmed from a young age to follow this certain this certain uh, path that society's laid yeah. out and these markers yeah. of success. And and you know, I, I'll just say most not, most of that stuff doesn't even really matter. I mean, 
sure, we're we're making money, we're using money, but you know, when you when you when you're on your deathbed, you're not gonna care so much about right. you know selling these widgets and and how many you you were able to convert and how many you know it, it's about doing something that actually um, it it falls in line with your heart and soul. And mm-hmm. so, but to actually come to that point from <clears throat> following the, the, I guess the, the, the common narrative to going out on my own and just doing what made me happy, mm-hmm. that was the biggest step for me to take. Yeah. How do you <laughs> feel about yourself that you did take it? Cause there's probably a lot of people that may watch this that think, wow, I had this calling. 10, 15, 20 years ago, I didn't take it. Now I'm unhappy. How do you feel about yourself that you did? Oh, I feel amazing. And and again, it's one of those situations where I can wake up. I wake up with a huge smile on my face every day. I don't wake up and say, oh my God, I got to go through another day. I, gotta, <laughs> yeah. I, gotta, I have to I have to drive to the office with these people I hate. Yeah. Um, my boss is a jerk. None of that. Um, I don't allow people who are, who are, uh, in conflict with my higher good to be in my life period. Yeah. And um, it's wonderful that to always know that when you're coming into a situation, when you're working with someone, there's always some greater good taking place. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're not dealing with people and their, their politics and their attitudes and all this, this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, there's nothing but just the, the greater good being served, I guess. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Thank you so much for sharing that dude. Like, uh, I knew a little bit about you to an extent, but that's just opened up my eyes. So I really appreciate you sharing that story. But I think it's important as well for everybody watching this, like if they were wanting to get in contact with you, talk to you about what you do, and maybe they've had a similar experience to you and know they've got a calling for this, how would they get in contact with you? What's the best place? Sure. Um, so I have a website called learnenergyhealingonline.com. It's very mm-hmm. sim- easy to remember. And uh, you can go there and book a free call with me where we'll talk about how, if you're ready, if this is something that you desire to do, how we can actually awaken these abilities within you um, and set you on the path to start healing yourself, healing other people, and to embark on a whole new journey that's, you know, promising to be uh, one you'll never, you'll never be sorry about. Yeah. Well, I'm going to make sure I get that link off you guys. If you're watching this, I'll put that in the description. Like I said, if you haven't heard of Harold and you don't know more about his story and uh, you're intuitively uh, drawn to this interview or you want to learn more about how you can, like you said, unlock this thing for yourself, definitely get in contact with Harold. He's a wealth of knowledge. And like I said, I'm seeing him do some massive things in this industry, uh, which is incredible. We need more people like him. But man, I cannot thank you enough. That was incredible. That story is definitely uh, inspirational for myself, but also for the people watching this. And guys, this is what these interviews are about to find out about. The people, not just their business, not just about that, but to find out how it all started for them. So, man, being the first interview we've done, thank you so much for breaking the ice. That was awesome. And uh, I think later on down the track, uh, I'm sure people are going to be asking what's happening with you now. We'll get you on for another interview, see what's been happening, see what's happening with your skills as well, and definitely uh, follow your story closely. Okay. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. And it's been a pleasure. My pleasure, man. Well, thank you so much. Guys, stay tuned for our next interview. But like I said, I'll leave the links in the description, get in contact with Harold. And uh, even if it's just a chat with him, he's a wealth of knowledge and definitely worth his time.